eventually I will look back and realize that at key moments it served me well because anything can be both good or bad. Too much water will make you drown, right? So, but you also need it. So, so I will say this about the spectrum. Right now, as we sit and speak, I suspect I have suffered more behind it than not. But that has nothing to do with the spectrum. It has to do with my experience along it, perhaps. So my comment to add on to that, or my question was going to be, did you suffer because of the spectrum, mm -hmm. or did you suffer because of others' ignorance of Quite the so. spectrum? But yeah, it's the now, that's a difference. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think that that was part of it, definitely. I think there was a lot going on in my household. But I think that if people had been able to identify that about me, and again, right now it's just a strong theory with a lot of assistance, right? We have a lot of data that pointed toward it before we even started talking. And like I said, I think it was uh, the movie Temple Grandin, mm -hmm. and also a character on a show called Boston Legal. Those two characters really showed me myself in this very fascinating and uncomfortable way. And I was like, I know this is going to be stigma and everything, but honey, I think this is me, you know? And she's like, yeah. Because we already know. Well, yeah, she, she knew it was something, right? She knew it was something. There were two things that I could just go lock on to and just riddle out. Um, you know, when I, when I see, for instance, there are certain investigations that go on that I, I resolve very quickly, verbally. I'll, I'll predict the person, persona. Um, I can profile very well even though I've never studied that stuff. But that's because I have learned so much osmotically throughout the years that I can put together your friendly neighborhood murderer or, you know, thief or who might be responsible for X, Y, or Z. So much so, as a matter of fact, that um, I was not altogether surprised to read that. I think Sherlock Holmes' character was supposed to be kind of... Of course he was. Shown to be on the there. brilliant people were. Yeah, and I was like... So, for me, um, I will say the Spectrum has. I don't think I'd be the artist I am in all the ways of an artist. I don't think I'd be the artist that I am without having that. Once I'm locked in, there's no shaking me. You know? um, but by that same token, yeah, there's been a lot of chaos in Bedlam. And my, more to the quick, the coping mechanisms that I've come up with on my own, unfortunately, man, if I could take those back, because a lot of them have led to a lot of negativity. Okay, so let's talk about the positive ones because there are going to be people who recognize themselves as you call out those movies or you'll inspire them to watch those movies and who hear, just listen to you and they're like, I'm so feeling that and they do more investigation. So what are the coping mechanisms that do work for you? What would you recommend to an adult on the spectrum and what would you recommend to an adult who has a child on the spectrum? Which is kind of, sort of, mm -hmm. not fair, because you've got adults who have children mm -hmm. on the spectrum, but you're that kid. Mm -hmm. So the flip side of what they know yeah. might help them even more. I'll say if you have a child on the spectrum, I'll address that first. Um, first of all, try to figure that out, right? That's the first thing is the diagnosis. Um, after that, the spectrum, like all spectrums, has a lot of colors. Figure out where we are. You know, every person should be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. It's not the kind of diagnosis that just means you're going to die. Even AIDS isn't that anymore. You know? So, I, th I say look at the being and figure out what their language is. Uh, you, have you ever heard of the modalities of learning? I've heard of it, yeah. Like, similar to love languages, it's like yeah. either tactile. But yeah. Find out what theirs is, because that's how you get to them, right? You get to them through their, through their modalities, and their modalities may be an accretion of all of them. Maybe they need definitely not to have one. For instance, for me, every noise, every single noise that's been in here has distracted me considerably. I'm kind of, if it was repetitive especially, there haven't been a lot of them. But each one builds a certain tension in me and I have learned to cope. Let's transition into an adult with. You have to talk to yourself. We're all doing it anyway, but it'd be more cognizant. I call it Third Thomas. Third Thomas tells me about my health. He says, okay, you know what's going on right now. You know what could happen to you and how you could really lose it. 
I mean, there was a party. I'll give you this brief anecdote. There was a party where the second I walked in, I was with the love of my life. And she had told me there was going to be X number of people there, which were already too many. It was like five people, including us. You walk in, and literally, I, I should be not, the entirety of her extended family wasn't that real. It was a reunion, essentially. Great great grandma was there. Everybody. I'd only met her father once before, and it was his house. I walked in, and I literally, just like the characters in the movie, I walked in the bathroom and looked into the mirror and said, Get yourself together. And splashed water in my face. And then I ran out the door. And a snowstorm. And I kept running. And I kept running. <laughs> even as I did it, I did not yet identify third time. Okay, but even as I did it, I knew how, first of all, all the different, I call it the world tree, the different versions of response that this could garner. Um, how it could even spell my doom with her. She was a very familial person. And we were into it. I was like, we might have a problem now because I'm leaving. I didn't even tell her, you know. But also I resented her because she knew me by then somewhat and she knew that that was the exact wrong thing to do to me. And maybe she didn't know better. Maybe she did. Who knows to this day. But she ended up finding me about a mile from here. Still running in the snow, you know. But um, I also knew that she would come because... That was one of the world trees that burned the brightest. One of the branches that I saw was that she was going to cruise the street looking for me. So I stayed on the bigger streets in my flight so that we could be together again, as it were, right? If we could be said to be together, because if you don't know the person well enough, for instance, to not put them in that position, this is what yeah. I mean by learning to identify where they but are. But see, there's also, as you said, you do have to learn where they are because when you can help the child navigate the street, mm -hmm. the child can't have the conversation as an adult if they don't really know. Indeed. So, like, what do you tell the person? Mm -hmm. Does do, does he really not know, or is it just something he doesn't want to do, or he's shy? Mm -hmm. See, we call it shy, the traditional people. Yeah. Because that's what it <laughs> smells like, unless mm -hmm. you are familiar with the characteristics yeah. of. Oh yeah. So, I'm glad that both of you all had the patience. Mm -hmm. Also, what helped me was the that. oratorical competitions. Like, I was, I told you, I think last night, that in my Pentecostal church, I was highlighted as the one, prophecies and all, and that I would speak to many nations, etc. That, that one really stuck with me because it sounded very exciting and like me anyway. And this utter stranger coming on a revival and pulled me out. And I did the whole this thing, and he's like, yes, you. God's talking to you. So, he called me up. Um, so they put me in all the competitions, even against the adults, since I was six. And I won them all. I mean, I didn't lose any of them, I mean to say. You know? Mm -hmm. um, but every single time I was terrified. Not what people call stage right butterflies. I've seen people with that. I've seen various levels to that even. I am always terrified. And it wasn't until a recent panel that I was involved in that I actually realized that I had mastered the ability to hide. I had not mastered it. So you still it. feel Absolutely. that 100. Time. Do you feel it now, just you and I with the camera on? Yeah, to some extent, but not to the extent. Okay, don't knock my camera off the table. Yeah. Okay. It's like a shock therapy. I get overloaded. And what happens is, I don't know if this happens to all of us, but I can get this sort of weird reset. I start to feel like dizzy. And then, according to what people have told me on the other side of the fence, so you know, I was like, you were a master. Like, I don't know, you were smooth, blah, blah, blah. I was like, really? Because I felt like I should pass out. So, like, once there's a certain number that it passes, and, it, and each venue is different. Like you'd say, the Trust is Theater one, there was only about 200 people there at most. But the fact that it was dark, and darkness implies more depth, and then really bright lights, because it's a theater. That was unnerving on a level of like a thousand people that I could confirm the existence of. And yet, like I said, there's a key moment where it just boom, it knocks over for me and I'm just like, okay, first I get that sick feeling and then it's like, I'm gonna either die up here or not. And then usually I don't die, of course, that's how I got here. So, um, yeah, it can be odd. It's interesting. Yeah, but Third Thomas has been my salvation because it's the voice of all the things I've read all the things I've read that have told me, or even looking back in retrospect at bad events and going, okay, so this is how it could be. This is how it could transpire. And then there's how you can actually 
troubleshoot it, mask it. Um, I don't know. I think Third Thomas is my real salvation. So, you know, like I said, we talk to ourselves anyway. Right. We're all doing that. You right. Know, even right, if you're right. just trying out what you're going to say next. Right. But for me, I was very conscious, or I am very conscious of that internal dialogue. Like I make it a voice, so that he's it's like I'm not allowed. To.